Hi, everyone. Well, that was great, wasn't it? <laughs> so uh, thanks uh, to Payments Canada for inviting me back actually the second year in a row. Um, I was actually buried on day three as the final session on the agenda last time. So hopefully I did something right to be invited back uh, right at the start here. Uh, but I really appreciate uh, them putting together this event. Uh, it's amazing to see the size of the crowd and, and certainly the caliber uh, of the audience as well. So uh, I'm going to be talking to you guys about uh, the application of these advanced technologies in financial services. And I'm going to do this presentation in exactly uh, two parts. The first part of my presentation will take uh, exactly 6 minutes, 40 seconds. You can time it if you like. Uh, where I'll introduce some of the key themes and areas of how AI, blockchain, reg tech technologies get used in financial services today. And then I'll talk to you a little bit more about some of the new technologies that are coming out and some of the new announcements that are coming out shortly uh, as well. So with that being said, uh, let's get started. Yep, clicker doesn't work. Perfect storm, isn't it? Okay, so the first thing I want to tell you is you actually should not care about AI, blockchain, or any of these technologies at all in and of themselves. In and of themselves, they have no value. The value is if you can apply them to solve really, really specific problems. It might be strange hearing that from a tech guy, but it's true. So when you look at what a cognitive solution is or what is AI, uh, if I use the acronym URL, you might think of an internet address. Forget that. The new URL is understand, reason, and learn. Only then can an AI system really be valuable to you. Now, if you look at our industry as well, uh, there's been an emergence of fintech companies for over the last few years. We are now seeing reg tech emerging as a significant category as well. And the next wave is going to be uh, soup tech, which is all about supervisory technologies. So there is key capability that's coming to the market today through these new companies. But fear not, the incumbents will rise again. In fact, IBM released a study from our Institute for Business Value talking about, about why existing financial institutions have the ability to use existing data on clients to differentiate themselves. And this is much more than just a simple Google search when you're talking about AI and advanced technologies. And this is why contextual understanding is so important, right? You can demonstrate things on stage, but in real work, if you're asking a contextual question about elephants, you're not getting the exact right answer. So in the old days, content used to be the king, but those days are gone. It's all about context now. You saw it in the opening video at the, at the conference. You heard it in Jerry's opening remarks. It's all about being able to engage clients in a meaningful fashion, serve them, and protect them. Did I say protect them? This kind of uh, uh, demonstrates enough in and of itself, right? You can go too far and become too funky in terms of using data and technologies. And that's why in financial services, you really have to be careful with the trusted data that your clients are entrusting you with. So two days ago, I had the good fortune to meet the central bank governors for all major central banks globally in Basel, Switzerland. I spent over two hours with them one-on-one. -on -one. And this was a key a topic that they were concerned about, where what happens when AI is actually a black box where we don't know the basis of its decision making. And that's why I believe augmented intelligence is the accurate way in which to use AI where you still specifically in financial services have humans at the center of decision making and not the machines themselves. They actually operate as assistants to serve you in making better decisions. So there are a couple uh, areas that are really, really emerging in financial services as key areas where I'm working with clients every day and they are seeing significant value. And I wanted to touch on some of these areas uh, today to kind of just get your sense. So obviously, client insight and engagement is a key one. Yeah? You, saw, you saw Google's talk uh, a couple of days ago, uh, having AI kind of book a salon restaurant or a restaurant appointment. And that's all good, and you'll see more of that. But a lot of that is kind of 
just digital assistant using speech-to-text technology. Regulatory compliance, which might be a very boring area to people outside financial services, is essential for us because clients, banks are spending billions of dollars firstly trying to comply, and then when they fail, paying again billions of dollars in fines. So improving efficiency there is crucial. KYC, know your customer, is another very, very important area where I'm seeing significant lift in terms of removing the burden of actually identifying and authenticating clients. And there are a number of key projects that we're executing in this space as well. And of course, uh, anti-money laundering. Uh, Jerry talked about uh, fraud and uh, the fraud rates growing, but money laundering has become, become a huge area. By the way, if you want uh, a quick uh, tutorial on money laundering, check out this show, Dirty Money, on Netflix, which does a good job of explaining that. So 2%. This number is actually the exact percent of time my wife tells me I'm right when we have an argument. But, but it's also the actual percentage of, uh, actual, of fraud alerts that are actually fraudulent because the false positive rates are huge, and we're applying AI there as well. And surveillance as well, catching bad guys who are, might be employees of your organization, who might be colluding with external organizations. Or you heard about complaints and sales practices being another key area where surveillance technologies are being applied. And of course, how can we forget our favorite area, payments, right? We're talking about less than five seconds for instant payment settlement. And in that time, you need to be able to also uh, detect for fraud. So application of key cognitive technologies, um, and IBM's been working a lot in this space, is key here as well. Now, you heard Bruce talk about a blockchain a little bit, but actually, we've all seen Bitcoin. Bitcoin's kind of only been the appetizer. By, by the way, quite a bad appetizer. The main course is blockchain. That's where real technology gets used to solve very, very real problems. So for instance, uh, do you know that a single shipment of avocados from Africa coming to Europe involves over 200 intermediaries in between and an enormous amount of documentation? We are now working with Maersk shipping line, for instance, to apply blockchain to solve that problem. So to summarize, how do you begin with AI, reg tech, and blockchain? There's no such thing as an AI or a blockchain project. There are only real problems to which you're applying the technology. Begin in an agile fashion with sprint-like uh, projects, which only take six to eight weeks. Begin with real data. And finally, use domain-specific experts who actually understand the technology and the domain. Right? So we acquired a company called Promontory Financial Group, which is specialized in AML work and regulatory compliance work. So whether you work with IBM or another partner, this is the approach that I would suggest that you deploy. So that's my six minutes, 40 seconds. I'm taking a, a, a breath and going to see if this clicker is actually still operating. It is. So just to give you a sense of, uh, of some more exciting things that are coming out. I talked about Watson Financial Services as a key area. So you can have AI and cognitive as a general purpose thing, doing digital virtual assistance, et cetera. But it's only when you apply the deep domain technologies that it becomes really, really valuable. We did that with healthcare as the first domain with application of Watson for oncology. And since last year, since our announcement of Watson Financial Services, we're going all in on financial services in very specific domains to get that value. And you kind of were introduced to Maud just at the start this morning. I hope it, it we'll get it fixed and we, you'll see more of it, that uh, Payments Canada is actually uh, launching. And Maud actually uses some IBM Watson cognitive services, such as speech-to-text, text-to-speech, and conversations as some of the APIs in the system that they will develop over time further as well. So what are the areas in which we are actually using these technologies, right? So I talked about risk and compliance. Let's see if we can ask more a question, otherwise I'll tell you the answer. Oh, we're actually working. 
Hey, Maud, are you awake? Of all people, you should know better than that, Vivek. I am always awake. Okay, she's always awake, she says. How about that? So, Maud, how much do banks spend on regulatory compliance? The financial services industry spends $80 billion on regulatory compliance per year. This is expected to increase by 50% to $120 billion in the next five years. On average, 10% of a bank staff will work in this area. 10% of a, ba a bank staff will work in this area. So think of the opportunity cost of actually applying AI to aid and assist in this space. When I was talking to all the central bank governors just two days ago, I thought they would be really like lukewarm about this area, but they were actually very, very keen on banks using these technologies. And many of them spoke up due to confidentiality, I can't name which ones, but many of them spoke up talking about how they also, to evaluate submissions of banks, w were very keen to use these technologies as well. Financial crimes and money laundering we also talked about, right? I mean, if you're getting 2% uh, of um, transactions that are genuinely fraud and 98% of them being false positives, obviously something's not working. And we're seeing a lot of value in applying Watson and AI technologies to actually improve the efficiency of detecting those false positives and automating to a large extent how that's done as well. And of course, blockchain, right? I gave you the example on the avocados, but actually it's being applied in a, in a lot of other areas as well. Let's see if Maud knows something about it. Hey Maud, in which areas are blockchain projects being implemented? Blockchain technology is no longer a limiter. Not only banks, but major intermediaries now use the technology in production. Trade finance and optimizing product supply chains are two major areas where value is being delivered. So I gave you an example already uh, earlier of a supply chain and how Maersk is using it, but there are many other areas where blockchain is being used as well, right? It's really about having a shared trusted environment in which people can actually uh, work together efficiently, value can be exchanged, and obviously payments is at, remains at the center of blockchain as well. So to, just to give you a sense, these are some of the client examples or areas where we are actively executing blockchain projects. And there are tons more that you can pass by our booth and, and, and learn more about, but I just wanted to give you a sense that this is not for like next year or the year after that, this is for right here, right now. So I encourage all of you to, to dive deep into them. There was one more that I wanted to use as an example and share with you, and that's a trade finance example. I, I liked this example very much. This is, we trade is the name of a European consortium of these nine banks that actually allow competing banks to come into their home country and offer trade finance to small and medium enterprises. You will think, are they crazy? Why are they doing that? Well, because it also allows them access to other markets and they can actually differentiate themselves based on the value of their services rather than just based on um, uh, kind of technology limiters, right? And, they, and using blockchain as a common platform is where they're able to gain significant value. And of course, payments. Just a couple of months ago, uh, we announced our IBM Universal Payment Solution for blockchain, right? So it basically supports uh, a multi-ledger platform. It's based off of IBM. Uh, IBM uses the Hyperledger platform at the moment, so it's based off of that, but it interacts with multiple platforms, and the whole goal is to use it for real-time payment and settlement as well. So to summarize, no such thing as an AI project. There are only business problems that need to be solved where you can apply AI and blockchain-like technologies. So I encourage all of you in your own organizations to evaluate some of the areas that I've talked about where I'm seeing significant value. And I'm more than happy to come back and talk to any of you around where those values can be received. And there's, by the way, 
even this uh, concept of a POC, I don't really like it. Because when you use actual real data, you quite quickly can see, is there real value and is it paying for itself? The problem with a POC is generally, it's in a controlled environment, everything works. But then when you actually put it into production, it kind of falls down. And third, remember augmented intelligence. Have domain experts, hopefully IBM, but it could be others as well, who understand the domain, whether it's reg compliance, whether it's counter fraud, whether it's uh, supply chain. Ensure that you have companies that are interacting with this technology and understand it intimately to actually work with you in that space as well. So I wanted to close on one final note in terms of what we've got set up here uh, uh, at, the, at the booth, which I encourage all of you to, to pass by. And we are actually launching an IBM payment center here for Canada. And we're very excited about it because it's really a fabric where Canadian payments providers can actually offer each other services and collaborate, leveraging some of these advanced AI technologies that we have embedded into our solutions. And it's fully built based from the ground up, based on IBM Cloud. So you have a, a directly a very secure and easy way to access these services. So on that note, I would thank you all for your attention this morning. I'm going to wish you a very, very successful conference. And I hope to catch up with many of you over the next two days. Thanks very much for your attention.